I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Hello, good after, as I said earlier, good afternoon, at least if you're on east coast of the U.S. Um, I want to welcome everyone using to our session today using Safe Assign and Blackboard plagiarism prevention in one click. Um, our presenter today is Dr. Nicole Odell from University of Rochester. She's a senior instructor there. Um, she also graduated from there. Uh, with her PhD from the Graduate School of Education in Teaching and Curriculum. So she is going to be our fantastic, fantastic, excuse me, presenter today. Um, before I hand it off to her, I know you've probably heard this a few different times today, but just a couple quick items before we jump in. Um, we will have time for questions at the end. So please, please, please leave your questions in the chat, and then we will leave time at the end to answer those. So we encourage you, comments, questions, all of that in the chat to the right. Um, Dr. Odell has been kind enough to share her slides with us today. So that is available at the bottom if you want to download this and keep it um, to use or to reference later on. So without anything else, I'm going to hand it off to you, Dr. Odell. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Leslie. Um, thank you for everybody that's joining us right now. Um, I'm glad that you've made it through the little mid-afternoon slump and you've um, decided to join me here today. So um, today I'm going to be talking about SafeAssign, obviously. My session is entitled Using SafeAssign and Blackboard, Plagiarism Prevention in, in One Click. Um, as uh, Leslie introduced me, my name is Nicole Odell. I'm a senior instructor and instructional designer at the University of Rochester, which is located in upstate New York pretty close to Canada, so we're in that Arctic tundra kind of zone. <laughs> um, and in my role, I support several of our faculty members and different departments as they deliver coursework um, through Blackboard. I also led several uh, professional development sessions for faculty as we were kind of transitioning into um, more online teaching at the beginning of the pandemic. So uh, of everybody that's in the room with us today, I'm hoping that we have a mix of some users who have already used SafeAssign along with some people who may be new to the tool today and wanna learn more about how you can effectively use it in Blackboard. So um, in this session, I'm gonna give a brief overview of the SafeAssign tool um, along with a case study that we did here at Rochester, kind of outlining, outlining how we utilize the tool uh, as an early intervention strategy to help some of our students really succeed. Um, so first, just to give you an idea of what SafeAssign is, if you've never used the tool in Blackboard, um, it's a free tool. It's already available, integrated into the Blackboard system, um, and it automatically will check for plagiarism in any written assignment that is um, uploaded into the system through the assignment function. So why is this important? Why should we want to use this? Um, a survey study by the International Center for Academic Integrity found that approximately 81% of students reported that they used the internet to copy and paste the text into their papers without citation. So that's a very large number of our students who are just simply going out to the internet, finding blocks of text, and then copy and pasting it and submitting it as is. Um, very alarming, I'm sure, for many people. Maybe not surprising in this day and age, but there is a way inside of Blackboard to easily combat this, pla this plagiarism um, with just a simple click. Um, so that's what I'm going to go through now. Uh, to use the Safe Assign tool, the course instructor actually has to initialize the feature at the time that they either create the assignment or deploy it. And I'm going to show you that process in a few slides um, from now. But after you do that and the um, assignments are actually submitted into Blackboard, the Safe Assign software will effect essentially just read through the document as a reader and compare the text to many different um, sources out there. So Based on this scan, SafeAssign will automatically produce an originality report that's available um, to view by both the course instructor and the student simultaneously, which is very, very um, important so the students also can see where the points of concern are. To give you an idea of how the software, software actually works, 
um, I've listed where the sources are actually pulling from for the software. So Safe Assign um, does a content review based on text from assignments that are submitted by students at your own home institution, along with outside institutions as well. This can include journal articles, um, textbooks, along with text from internet sources such as websites and blogs, which can really be um, very useful as most people don't have the time or resources to go through all of those different sources individually and kind of do cross checks on your assignments that are being submitted. Um, and before I move on from this slide, I just want to make a general statement that I'm not being paid by SafeAssign or Blackboard, and this presentation is not at all sponsored by SafeAssign. Um, but I really wanted to do the presentation because in my experience, it was a great tool to use, and I feel like we often underutilize it at our institution. Um, so I think that um, the case that I'm going to present right now will kind of both demonstrate the tool's effectiveness for you, as well as the ease of use um, and, and really integrating it with Blackboard. So just so you have a little bit of an idea about the course where we did this case study, I'm going to give you a little bit of background. Um, so this was an asynchronous course taught solely in Blackboard. The, um, the course instructor and the students never met live in any type of fashion. Um, it was a graduate level course in the Department of Public Health Sciences. It was one of our introductory courses in the department, so that means it's required for several of the um, degree programs within that department, master's and PhD level. Um, specifically, it's, it's uh, required for our master's of public health, which is the most um, enrolled program in the department. Uh, during the semester um, that we're talking about in this case study specifically, there were 26 students enrolled in the section that included a mix of both full time and part time students um, It included both remote and um, students who were on campus at some points in their education. And it included many different educational backgrounds. Some people were coming in fresh off of their undergrad um, bachelor's degree. Others were more advanced and had their MD and PhDs and were looking to get an MPH to really supplement their education at this point. Many of the students were foreign trained and um, some actually English was their second language when they entered the program. In the case of the course instructor that led this course, she did choose to utilize Safe Assign for all of her written assignments in the course. So she really had a great level of security in terms of um, plagiarism prevention. Now I'm going to talk about the assignment that um, the student was asked to uh, complete and was the source of our case study, just so you have an idea of what was expected of the student at the time of submission. So this was actually the very first assignment that the student was going to submit in this course. First written assignment of the semester. So this was really the starting off point. It's a, a relatively short assignment, very straightforward kind of um, meant to ease the student into the semester and get them used to writing. There was pre-work that needed to be done by the students before they actually did the written assignment. And that included reading one of three book chapters that were assigned. Um, so they could choose basically between global health infection, innovations in health and women and children's health. And basically, each one of these different chapters um, was, was a different perspective that the student was supposed to um, purvey in their actual assignment. So if they chose the first one, they were supposed to do their assignment from an environmental perspective, uh, the second from a political or economic perspective, and then obviously the last from a social perspective. The assignment instructions itself within Blackboard um, specified very clearly on what was expected from the student at the time of submission. So um, the, basically they were um, going to select their chapter above, uh, read the chapter, and then when they started to write, the first thing they would do is state the chapter that they read. 
And then they would go on to answer the two um, discussion questions below, basically discussing how global in health impacts everybody's health globally, um, not just in the United States, obviously, but on um, all different countries across the globe, and then also how global health impacts security across the globe. They were supposed to provide examples from the text. Obviously, um, that meant providing citations and the citation list. And then um, the total length of the assignment was three to four pages. And in terms of grading, it was going to be graded out of 100 points. Again, this assignment was low stakes as it constituted a very small percentage of the students overall grade. But um, it, it was important as a marker of where the student was kind of as a baseline in their writing and their writing style. So now I'm going to start sharing some screenshots of Blackboard and SafeAssign so you can get an idea of what it looks like in the actual environment. Uh, I really would have preferred to go live and walk everybody through the whole process directly in Blackboard, but I really wanted to make sure that I was protecting the identities of both our instructors and our students during the presentation. So I went with screenshots just to make sure that everything was very clean. So at the end, if um, anything I'm talking about now is unclear while I'm going through it, um, the demonstration of different portions of SafeAssign and Blackboard, please just let me know at the end and I would be glad to explain it more in more detail. So as I mentioned previously, uh, in our system, I can't exactly speak for your Blackboard installation, but in our instance, um, we do have to initialize SafeAssign for each of our written assignments. So either when the um, instructor creates the assignment or when they deploy the assignment, they have to make sure that these um, boxes are checked in order for SafeAssign to do its job. So as you can see, this is inside of the um, what you would call the edit assignment view in Blackboard. And this is towards the bottom of that page under the submission details tab at the um, in this kind of gray shaded box towards the bottom that gives you some additional advanced features that you can turn on when you're creating an assignment in Blackboard. So you can see down here at the bottom of the screenshot, a section called plagiarism tools. This is essentially all of your um, different functionality that you can choose to turn on and in terms of SafeAssign. So the very first box is just simply turning it on and off. Um, and then it gives you a little bit of background about how SafeAssign works and if you need additional help um, using the tool. The second box here is allowing um, for your students to view the Safe Assign Originality Report along with the course instructor. And we really do recommend that this stays on um, in order to really keep the best interest of transparency with our students um, and allow them to learn from the Originality Report as well as, um, as they can view it and take advice from that. And then finally, this bottom option here, exclude submissions from the institutional and global reference databases. You can select that if you don't want your students' papers to go into the general database that will be used to scan against the um, new submissions to check for plagiarism and copying. So once the students submit their assignments and the course instructor is ready to grade, they can view the safe assign um, percentage directly from the grading interface. So um, as many of you know, this is how it looks in Blackboard. Once somebody is ready to grade an assignment in the grade center, you would do grade attempt, and this is where you would be brought. And if you have safe assign initialized for the assignment, you will see a little box over here that gives you a quick view of um, the results of the safe assign scan. So in this case, um, this was our case study in question, and we immediately saw that there was a problem because there was a hundred percent um, chance here. This is a, this is what the originality report is saying, basically, that there was a hundred percent chance that there was improper citations in this assignment. So we immediately obviously knew that we had a problem here and it was something that we definitely needed to investigate more. 
Um, now, this number um, shouldn't be taken at face value as, oh, automatically the software got everything correct. No, it is going to take a little bit of investigation on the part of your course instructor to either verify or um, invalidate the findings from the software. <clears throat> So from here, we clicked view originality report right here of this gray button. And that is going to where, you, where you're going to be brought really into the safe assigned software so that you can view the full report and all of the detailed um, findings. So when you click that, this is the view that you'll be brought into, into safe assign. This is the actual originality report here in this first box here. So you can see it gives, um, again, the high risk potential for improper citations. It also gives a box with the sources that it believes that the citations are missing from. And um, the main box here is the text, obviously, from the original assignment. And it highlights each area that it believes that there's an improper citation with, with a different color based on where it believes that the source is coming from. So each different source is highlighted in its own specific color. If we hit here in the right hand corner, view report summary, we will get this little um, side window to kick out here, which gives us a little bit more um, in depth information and an explanation of what high risk really means. So in their terms, high risk means there's a very high probability that the text in these papers was copied from other sources. These papers include quoted or paraphrased text in excess and need to be reviewed for plagiarism. So clearly, again, we knew that there was a problem here with this um, submission. We knew both from the 100% um, improper citation risk and from the large amount of highlighted text in here that appeared to be taken from other sources. Um, at the bottom, just a little side note, it does provide a little bit more information to you um, about the document itself, a uh, word count, when the date, the date that that um, submission was actually received, and then some identifying information as well. If we click into the sources box, we can actually see the different sources that the software believes that the citations are coming from. And in this case of our case study, we can see that um, the large majority are coming from this internet source here, um, about 93% of the citations that um, are suspected as improper in the document. The others were actually coming from other student papers that were submitted from um, students that were inside of our institution. Um, and this actually occurred because a lot of the answers that students were providing were very, very similar. We went in and we actually checked all of the um, six suspected plagiarism counts in the paper. And we found that it was because the students' answers were very, very similar because they were answering the same types of questions. So in that case, we were able to actually clear those, um, those six suspected um, improper citations as being erroneous. So the main problem that we were looking at was right here, these 93% that were coming from a internet source. It was hard to tell what the source was just when we were looking inside of Safe Assign because it just said NAP. But um, there's very nice functionality once you're in the sources screen. So right here, um, you can click this and actually it will take you out directly to the source that it believes that the um, citation is coming from. So once I clicked on the, the little click out here, I was brought to the actual citation, which um, turned out to be this primary source listed here which was actually the textbook for the course, which made perfect sense, right? Because they were supposed to take um, evidence from the text to, to support their argument and, and complete the assignment. The problem was, is that they took the information from the text and did not properly cite it um, when they submitted. So I'm going to show you a few specific um, examples of the types of indicators that we observed in the originality report um, for this specific case. Our student did not include a citation list at all, so we immediately knew that there was a problem. Um, 
we were looking for a reference list based on not only the textbook, but other references that the student may have used to complete the assignment. And many other students did complete a reference list um, successfully. Just the student didn't realize that that was um, necessary for this assignment. So in this example here, we see that the green highlighted area was the actual um, part that was submitted in the written assignment. And then we, we have a um, match down here, the student paper on the left hand side, the original source from the textbook on the right hand side. And we can see that the, after the word is, basically the text is um, identical. The student basically copied the text word for word after um, after inserting this uh, a little introductory sentence here at the beginning. Uh, no type of citation or um, reference to the textbook was made. The second example here was even more alarming to us as not only did the student um, copy the textbook basically word for word, but they also included references directly from the textbook um, appearing to just copy and paste from the online document essentially here. So you can see here and here, this was basically just copied and pasted, lifted right directly from the online version of the um, textbook and then insert it without any type of citation or changing the um, citation list, anything like that. So um, again, there is um, no way for us to really remedy this without actually going to the student and um, discussing it. And other than clearing up the 7% of the student paper overlaps that were originally identified and ruling out cheating in those um, instances. The overlaps um, from the textbook that were validly flagged as plagiarism had to be further investigated with the student. So I know that many of us are used to discussing plagiarism in a negative connotation, along with um, maybe disciplinary actions or elevating it beyond the department. and. Um, those types of things often accompany the types of findings that I'm discussing today, right? But in this case study, we really wanted to use SafeAssign to create several teachable moments um, for both the course instructor and the students in the course. So we did not use this event to invoke disciplinary measures on the student, um, but we rather, we used it to really create an opportunity to connect with the student and make sure that they had the tools and resources needed to succeed as they went further into the program. So first, uh, this assignment was definitely a trigger that really alerted our department that the student was struggling. Um, before this, we didn't really have a lot of contact with the student and um, this was kind of the alarm bell that went off for everybody to know that the student really needed more um, support in terms of reading and writing. So after contacting the student about the originality report through email, uh, we had a long email kind of back and forth and we could still tell that the student really did not grasp why um, they what they did was wrong and how to remedy it. So we scheduled a one-on-one -on -one conference with the student via Zoom, and we actually went through each piece of the report and explained why it was incorrect to do it that way. And then uh, we also prompted a referral for the student to receive additional support through our Office of Writing Services. Um, and they assist students with many types of different writing projects, including um, class projects and dissertations, bigger things like that. And uh, we also referred the student to our medical library for assistance using reference management um, software. Uh, second, this case really prompted the instructor to provide additional guidance to students on how to properly attribute sources while writing and the expect expectations of graduate program level writing really. Um, the instructor pointed out to students um, different resources that could help them manage references and the correct way to cite both inline and direct quotations as they wrote. Many times uh, we see it here at the university that departments have these expectations on students to know certain things 
and they don't really explicitly spell them out or reinforce those expectations um, through guidance. So for students who may have been away from academia for a long time, or for students who English is their second language, they really may need more support as they begin writing again. Um, and this guidance is really important in students when their writing style is still malleable and they're early in their programs where they're still really navigating their way through the different aspects of the curriculum. And then finally, uh, SAFE assigned by far recognized more instances of plagiarism than the course instructor would have humanly been able to do uh, with 26 students putting in papers basically every single week, it would be very hard for her to um, look through all of those papers and really identify among all of those sources uh, instances of plagiarism. So there's no way that um, our instructors would have the time or capacity to look for every reference or to cross check students' papers against each other's. Um, Safe Assign is really the only way that we can manage that load of plagiarism checking. In the example paper provided, the problems were obviously glaring, but there's many more instances of plagiarism that are much more discreet and less detectable. And so there, and there's papers obviously that are on a much larger scale um, that would be much harder to check um, on an individual basis. So Safe Assign truly makes plagiarism checking a breeze and integration with Blackboard makes using the tool really seamless and efficient. Um, I know that was quick and a lot of information, but that really concludes the points I wanted to make about Safe Assign today and our experiences at the University of Rochester using um, the tool. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have at that at this time, or um, if you needed more information about how to use it, I'd be happy to go over that as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Odell. Um, we do have a couple of questions, um, but please keep adding them to the chat as you think of them. And there's a few that I think you can help with, and there's a few that's probably a bit more for the Blackboard side. So I'll try and focus the ones that are more specific to you. So one of the ones that came up is um, how, and this might be more personal, but how would you compare it to Turnitin, if that's a program you've used as well? So were there any outstanding features that you felt we're better or worse in one area versus the other. I'm sorry, I haven't used the other program, so I can't speak to the functionality in there. Um, yeah, I can only speak to Safe Assign. I'm sorry. That's fine. Um, and the other big thing, um, so for Safe Assign and just how it was implemented, I guess for y'all. So from a, this is probably a Blackboard side. It's already built into the original courses. Um, did y'all put any processes around? introducing it for instructors? Is it part of y'all's like routine? Do they have to turn it on? Like how did you introduce it to y'all's instructor usage? Sure, yeah, so I'll be honest. When I first started as the instructional designer about two years ago, um, there was only one or two of our instructors who was using Safe Assign at that time. Um, and it was only from them talking to me about their experience using it and really having great feedback about using it that I became more familiar with it and um, began, I, I began using it in my own courses as well. Um, and then from there, I have, um, I have quarterly meetings with our faculty at their general faculty meeting and where I give updates. And during one of those updates, I actually went through Safe Assign and the features. And based on that, it really did grow the interest in using it. And um, I, I've noticed an uptick in use since then. Fantastic. Um, making sure I get, I know I'm gonna miss them. Um, do you, and I'm, now I'm skipping around, do, uh, do you let your students know that the feature is activated or do you let them know ahead of time that this is a feature that y'all are using? Yeah, so um, what we've done is we've started to incorporate it into our um, into our syllabi just to make sure up front that everybody's very aware. We already had some um, words in there about um, academic dishonesty and plagiarism and things like that. So it was very easy to just incorporate um, the use of Safe Assign for those courses that are utilizing it into that kind of language. Perfect. And then I'm trying to keep an eye on time too. So Sharon will tell me if I'm going yes. over. Um, another one, and this might be more for Blackboard side, so I apologize. Um, did you find any difficulty generating or adding in your own URLs or to the database? Um, or was that, did you find that 
I know someone mentioned that they were having trouble doing that. Um, so just want to see if that's something you've done or found any difficulty with. Yes, I, I've done that a couple of times without any difficulty, but you're right, that might be, if there's difficulty in that, that might be more of a Blackboard mm -hmm. um, IT um, issue. That's on, yeah. yep, that's on us, got yeah. it. <laughs> No, um, and then a few other, let me just see. I know we've had a lot of people answering questions in the chat as well because they're familiar, which is fantastic. Awesome, that's great. Um, I'm happy to hear that. I know. No, thanks. Oh, okay. Let's see. I just lost it. Okay. So hang on, hang on, hang on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. We are clearly at the last session of the day for me because everything just fell. Um, <laughs> I think we just couldn't even last these last few minutes. Um, what are your thoughts on establishing an originality or score threshold? And if a student exceeds the threshold, they automatically fail the assignment. So yeah, that was it, that happened in this, right? Like so we had um, several students that were in the 70% and up range where we really had to go in and look at their assignments and see. But I, I, would, um, I would echo again that it's very important to go in and look at the actual sources to make sure that some aren't erroneous. But we did anything 80% and up, we definitely contacted the student and made sure that um, they understood um, what was going wrong and why. Fantastic. Um, does it work with attachments? Yes, that, that was an attachment. Perfect. Um, I think that's other we have, I would say Chris O'Neill's have been in the chat who, thank you, he's been throwing in links and stuff for us, so I appreciate it. Clearly awesome, thank well. you so much, um, Chris. <laughs> um, I think that's, I, I'm sure I'm missing some. Um, I think we have, what is it, three, three minutes worth? 350. Sorry, I should have put all this crap. Um, please add chat. Um, I if I missed yours or anything, please add it in. Um, two minutes. Thank you. So we have a couple more minutes if there's one I missed or anything like that. Um, I don't believe it is built into original. I know that came up. You shouldn't have to have your admin turn it on. Double check though. If you pull up your Blackboard, um, if you're in the LMS and you don't see it when you look at an assignment, do ask your admin, but it's not something that should have to be like turned on. You do have to turn it on for the assignments though, yes. Um, do you ever find that a student plagiarized although safe assigned didn't catch it? So have you found any ones where they fell through the crack? Um, I have not personally found anything that fell through the crack cracks. I found it to be very reliable and very um, extensive, right? Like you would be very surprised about how many sources that it's actually kind of scraping as it's searching. It's found so many different things for me. I actually used it myself as I wrote my dissertation to make sure I wasn't plagiarizing, right? Because after reading for so long and so many of the same sources, Sometimes I would even make mistakes with my citations. So in that term, um, I, I found it to be very effective for large, large document. Perfect, thank you. And I have a lot of people correct me. Do talk to your BB admin about turning it on. I apologize. I spend too much time, time in our demo. So that is <laughs> Leslie's fault. <laughs> I'm too used to what's available. Um, fantastic. So do talk to your BB admin if it's not already turned on. Yeah. Um, can one last, I think we have time, one last one. Uh, can the students get a percentage without submitting an assignment? So similar to what you were just talking about, can they get that information back before submitting it? So um, the way that we, we handled that was we had turned on multiple attempts. So students could basically um, submit, look at their report, and then, and then make adjustments and submit again. Um, but you would have to have the multiple attempts turned on for that. I think that's a great idea, absolutely. So great suggestion. Yeah. Um, I think we are just at time. Um, right. So any other questions? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say um, we have access on the dashboard to everyone. So I'm sure Dr. Adele would be, if you message her separately, um, would be happy to continue the discussion. Absolutely. Um, all of the recordings of this will be available through November on this dashboard. So if you joined late or had to jump off early or want to rewatch, please come back and watch. Um, but again, I want to thank everyone for joining this session and today. And thank you so much, Dr. Odell. It's been fantastic for me, for me as well. I'm learning a lot. Um, but I just want to thank everybody. And again, thank you, Dr. Odell. Everyone have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for having me.